Okay, welcome everyone. My name is Brooks Bonner. I am an admissions counselor with the Organization for Tropical Studies. And today we are going to be talking about tropical diseases, environmental change, and human health with Jessica Rias, who is uh, one of the uh, logistic coordinators, education logistic coordinators for, for that program. Uh, Jessica is uh, talking to us today from La Selva, Costa Rica is actually our flagship research station. You can see the, uh, the beautiful background that is behind her uh, <laughs> of the jungle and some of our buildings and stations there. So um, before we get started, um, I do want to just say that if you do have questions at the end, I'm sure you will, uh, there's going to be an opportunity at the end to ask a few questions to Jessica or myself. <clears throat> Excuse me. And in order to do that, in order, I, in order so, uh, so I can basically unmute you and you can ask your question, um, there's a way for you to notify me when you do have a question. So if you're using uh, in the window, uh, the fuse window here, if you go to the bottom right hand corner of your screen, you should see three dots. And if you take your cursor over those three dots, it's going to say more menu. If you click that, a drop down box is going to appear and you're going to see a bunch of different options there. You're going to go ahead and select raise your flag at the end when you do have a question and I will go ahead and unmute you and you can ask your question uh, to Jessica in front of the group. So um, without further ado, I will hand it over to Jessica to uh, talk about this great program in Costa Rica. And uh, yeah, Jessica, go ahead, take it away. Thanks, Brooks. Uh, yes, as you said, we are here now in La Selva. You can see the beautiful background at the back. Uh, the students, our Tropical Diseases, Environmental Change and Human Health program is right here at La Selva. They are right there now. Uh, they are receiving a lecture there. And the idea of this webinar is basically to give you some ideas of what we do and what our program is about. So basically, uh, if you see let me see if you can see this, this the map. Uh, over there you see the different uh, biological and research station that OTS has. Uh, there are three main research stations here in the country. Uh, we have Palo Verde, which is a wetland. It's a beautiful ecosystem. It's, um, it's like 1,000 hectares of wetlands with 15 different uh, habitats and it's actually a migratory bear, bird route. And we also have more in the, in the north of the country, we have La Selva, where we are right now. Uh, La Selva, it's one of, if not the most productive tropical field uh, station in the world. This is based on a metrics uh, that are associated with publications and vis visitation of students and researchers. So that is due to our good infrastructure and our sophisticated um, resources that we have here. Basically, right now we're in the middle of the, of the rainforest and we have a lab in our backs. We have classrooms. Uh, we have... Uh, interesting type of equipment, like for doing PCR or other more uh, detailed techniques, for example, which is something that is hard to find in the middle of the jungle because, right, yeah, this is the jungle. So it's a beautiful ecosystem here. There's a ton of species. We do research here with our students. We do field work here that we will talk more about later on in the talk. So just for you to know that if you come here, you will have the experience of being in one of the most productive research stations in the world. So then we also have Las Cruces uh, in the southern region of the country. Las Cruces, it's, um, it's a pre-mountain forest, basically. And inside of Las Cruces, there is the famous um, Wilson Botanical Garden. And there, there's a huge variety of different uh, plants that are not from here, well, that are not native and also plants that are native as well. We hold there one of the biggest plant, uh, one of the biggest collections of 
pounds in the world. Uh, if you are interested in plants, definitely that's a place to go. It's just beautiful. There's a tons of birds and there are also good facilities in there. Or our biological research station has internet access and a lot of trails to walk in and a lot of facilities to do research and to, to develop courses like this one. Um, then we, as a tropical diseases, we also do more things than just being in our research stations. We also go to indigenous territories, mainly the ones that are uh, near Las Cruces Biological Research Station in the southern region of the country. So throughout the semester, we will be sitting around three different uh, indigenous groups, trying to learn from them a little bit about ethnobotany, about ethnomedicine, and also uh, things associated with health of those uh, minorities here in the country. Also, we go out of the country. Uh, we are going to Nicaragua, uh, and there we usually work with NGOs that are developing different types of uh, public health um, research or projects in rural communities. So we are also trying to do a little bit of outreach there while the students are learning from different experiences there, visiting some local clinics or like getting more into their culture as well. And finally, the course also have the the course also have has the opportunity for you to to do your Spanish practice here because we will have three weeks full of Spanish. Basically, you will be in an academy that is called Costa Rica Language Academy in San Jose. And while there, you will be um, having the opportunity to do homestay in a Tico family. So I'm, I'm Costa Rican, by the way, and we, we love to be called Ticos. So you will be staying in a Tico family, getting more practice of your Spanish, and getting to know more the culture as well. So basically, in general terms, those are the places that we usually visit. But what do we usually do? So if you take a look at this picture here, this is more or less how a regular day will look like. Uh, here in the field, we usually get up very early. We usually have breakfast 6.30 in the morning, lunch at 12, and then dinner at 6 every single day. And during the day, what we usually do is first in the morning, we go and receive some lectures and some like more theoric approaches of diseases, of vector-borne diseases, of ethnobiology, of environmental change and how all those things are connected. And then in the afternoon, we usually go outside in the field in order to kind of put in practice what we saw in the morning. So basically, uh, we have lectures, we have field trips in the, in the areas around the the research stations. We usually also invite um, uh, faculty or professors to join us. So that will enrich our program more. And we have different activities that are associated with lab, but also activities that are associated with culture of indigenous around the area or are associated with uh, agriculture here as well. So we have a huge variety of different topics that we're trying to cover. Uh, always following the line with um, the tropical disease aspect. So then our program basically, it's unique because what we do here is really learn science by doing science basically not only receiving lectures what we is receiving lecture is what we usually do back in our regular home institutions but here you are not only receiving lectures then you are going out in the field and putting in practice what you have learned in the morning so there are some pictures right there of different uh students that has been in this course uh doing different practicing practices like collecting larvae from vectors, from mosquito larvae, um, learning about pineapple, learning about plants, 
uh, the picture that it's in there in the in the top right side of your screens are the students that are now here in the program. They are there in Nicaragua uh, collecting larvae from those containers. Uh, we usually also learn from the indigenous the way that they use uh, plants and natural resources as a, as a way of living. So it's a very holistic and very, very interesting semester because we are combining different things, not only biological and ecological aspects, but also health aspects and cultural aspects, all in just one semester, which is great. And then uh, I would like to hear questions from you as well, uh, because this is for us is once in a lifetime experience uh, you will be exposed to many different experiences our students are very happy at the end of the program because they are exposed to many different uh, not only ways of learning but also ways of approaching and solving problems in science so if you are interested in doing research in your future this is a great program because besides learning from tropical diseases from environmental change and ethnobiology you will also have the opportunity to be trained how to do in how to do research because we hold here what we call faculty-led projects so basically we invite faculties that are expert in different areas and they will come here and guide some research for the students and they will will actually do the research and at the end of the semester we have uh, a, a big amount of time for the students to develop their own research projects so based on what they have learned through the semester and the knowledge that they have gained they come out with ideas and with different things that they can do here at the end of the program. So now our current group of students, they are now thinking about different cool things that they want to do. And they actually have really nice ideas that have come either from the part here in Costa Rica or either from Nicaragua. So we are about to start developing the proposal of those research projects. So I hope that I kind of cover more or less everything. Uh, very, very general, but please, if you have questions, do not hesitate to ask me any type of question about the program, the courses that we have here, the places that we visit, logistic aspects, whatever. Brooks? Great, great. Thank you, Jessica. It's, uh, it's always informative to hear uh, updated versions of the program. So, um, as Jessica mentioned, now is the best time if you want to ask a question about something that maybe Jessica talked about or maybe something that she, she didn't talk about that you had heard about the program. Now is the time. Um, I do think that, you know, Jessica made a, a good point while people are, you know, uh, getting up the nerve to ask the question. I think Jessica makes a good point in the sense that, you know, this is not um, a traditional type of study broad experience. You're going to be in the field. Uh, you're going to you know, understand uh, what it's like to be uh, a researcher, a field researcher uh, in the tropics, uh, in a demanding place, but at the same time that's demanding, it's also very rewarding. Um, so just as uh, in other things in life, you don't, uh, you don't um, get nothing without putting something into it. So um, it's, it's definitely a challenging, but a rewarding experience for all the students that participate. So uh, as Jessica said, you know, questions, this is your chance. Um, no, no dumb questions. Even if you missed a part of it, that's okay. Uh, go ahead and raise your flag and I'll unmute you and you can ask a question. Um, let's see. But, um, Jessica, maybe while, um, can you talk a little bit more about the, um, the homestay and the language part of the program? Cause you did talk about it briefly, but can you say a little bit more about that? Oh, yes, yeah, sure. Uh, yes, I, I was very brief on that aspect but basically uh, as i said before it's three weeks immerse of immerse of uh, in spanish but not only spanish and not only staying with your host family and talking to them and having fun with them and enjoying uh, being in a tico culture 
you will also have the opportunity in the afternoons after your Spanish lessons are over to take either cooking lessons, dancing lessons, go with your professors and visit in museums, uh, different like monuments that we have here. So time is not just for you to be learning like chromatic and different things like that that you may think of. Nope, it's basically learning Spanish in a very holistic way, in a very easy way, basically. So because you will be living with your host family, there are families that we know pretty well, we know that they cook delicious, we know that they are uh, more than happy to have students in their houses. And those houses are very close to, to CRLA, so you don't have to worry about traveling or anything like that. Uh, it's very close to the OTS main office, which is located in San Jose. Uh, San Jose is the capital city of Costa Rica. And basically from San Jose, you can move uh, to different parts of the country. Like that's the, that, like the biggest town that we have here. Uh, so, for those who are like city lovers, uh, those three weeks will fool your bodies for sure. And for those who are interested in learning about different cultures, about being taken out of your comfort zone and exposed to different experience and how culture uh, can shape your lives, that's a great opportunity. Not only the aspect of learning and improving Spanish, that for sure you will because I have, I have seen many students coming here saying, oh, my Spanish is so bad. And at the end, they came out saying like, oh, I learned a lot. And the, you, you see them more confident while they are talking in Spanish because uh, we usually go as well to communities and interact with communities. Sometimes we do outreach in the communities or some sort of small service or small research there. So again, that's another opportunity to pra practice the Spanish that you previous you have previously learned in these three weeks. I don't know. Questions about Spanish as well. That's great. That's great. So it's, it's a total immersion aspect of the program. It's not just about yes. the language, but it's also about the Tico culture in Costa Rica. So that was a very good explanation. Thank you. Um, okay. Any other questions out there? Last chance going once. Uh, actually, look, oh, there we go. It looks like Katie has a question. So let me get you unmuted here, Katie. Give me one sec. Okay. Katie, are you there? Hello, Katie. Well, I can't hear Katie. Um, if you, Katie, if you want to, you can try typing your question into the chat and I can relay that question to the group. I'll give her a second while she does that. But just a, um, while Katie is, is typing up that question in the chat window there in the bottom of your screen, you can click chat and then it'll open up a window. Um, just as a reminder for everyone, the spring application deadline is November 1st. So that is quickly approaching. You got that deadline. Um, so I'm sure uh, many of you have um, applied uh, internally at your school. However, uh, it's time time now to make sure that you get the application completed um, with OTS and with Duke. So um, I am, I guess we're having some trouble getting a hold of Katie there. Well, if you do have any questions after the fact or you think of something, email undergraduate at tropicalstudies.org or you can reply to the email that I sent out to all the registrants uh, about an hour, hour and a half ago. Okay. So um, thank you, Jessica, for taking time out. Um, the beautiful surrounding behind you, and um, hopefully we will uh, see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye.